my son is different. His challenges are complicated. If he's tenacious enough, he'll be able to overcome his obstacles. I need to guide him in a society that doesn't always understand or accept him. My dream is that he will progress in a fickle world, a world that is blind one day and nurturing the next. I have a teenager, and he has two parents. Well, some of the time. My baby and I are close. I do everything I can to help him. I validate him, I support him, and I love him dearly. And I also pray over him every night. And I never let on to Michael that raising him can be depressing sometimes. Well, I hate the peddlers and gangbangers that stalk him every day, but what I really resent is dealing with people who are so quick to... Judge my little boy. Yes, he's autistic and he's low functioning and he can't talk, but he is the sweetest little eight-year-old you would ever meet. Is he weird? Hmm. I prefer the word quirky. He hears trains and planes about five minutes before we do, and he obsesses over Barbie hair and pine needles and those big noodle things you take to the pool. He has a screwed up nervous system and a screwed up immune system. He can't feel pain or hot or cold, so he'll run out in the snow barefoot and not feel it, scald himself in the bathtub, not feel a thing. So you have to watch him every minute. He can't develop a fever and he can't sweat, so it's hard to dispel a virus. He has inflammatory bowel disease, a seizure disorder, communication issues, socialization issues, sensory issues, but he can swim like a fish. And the people who get him, well, they understand why he has to cover his ears and spin around and jump up and down for hours and hours. They understand the screaming too and why he has to do it. Well, I guess I'm lucky autism's hot right now. The more people know about it, the less frightened they are of my child, the less he comes off as a threat. Attitudes can change, though. I'm relieved when people finally open their eyes and choose to remain colorblind to the predominant stereotype. Black men are ignorant, lazy, shiftless, irresponsible, untrustworthy, violent. Some of them are. Some whites, Latinos, and Asians are, too. I just want the people outside my child's community to know and understand Michael the way he tries to understand himself. He's not so scary, you know. My son is a straight-A student and a runner and a great bass player, and his pants are sagging and he wears a do-rag, but that does not make him a... Criminal! Linda, I just got to look at him and he's coming toward us. Hold on to your purse. Just let him pass. Keep walking, just look. Normal is the way Michael wants to be treated. He gets sick of people looking at him all crazy when he hasn't done anything. He's just a... Normal little boy. Typical is what we call it. Mm. I pray for it every day, but I don't know if it's ever gonna happen. And because David's different, he makes people feel uncomfortable sometimes, like in the park, you know? They think he's gonna hit their kid or eat the dog or something just because he might be... Squealing like a hyena! Oh, good God, girl! I ain't never heard noise like that, and I got five kids. He is screaming just to hear his freckles rattle. Oh, come on now, we gots to go. He's coming up on my babies. Oh, look at him, poor thing. He's so cute. It's just a shame he's so... Inappropriate. That's why it's tricky taking him out in public sometimes. But if I want him to be independent one day, I can't sequester him at home. I've got to get him and the public used to it. Sometimes it sucks more for me than it does for him. But if I keep him distracted or bribe him with starbursts, he's an angel. Now, I remember this one time. I took him to the grocery store. This was a while back, and um, it was a nightmare. It's kind of funny now, but it wasn't back then. Anyway, so we're leaving the store... And I put him in a cart, and it was one of those days where he wasn't tolerating the vibration very well, and he starts screaming. Well, I just hear this old man yelling, and I couldn't see him at first. I think he was sitting on the benches in front of the store. Anyway, I hear him yelling out, Hey! Hey, you! You need to give that boy a whipping, you hear me? Well, it's like I said, you know, I couldn't see him at first. So I, I turned my cart around, excuse me? You heard me. I said you need to give that boy a whipping and shut him up. Well, pardon me. I mean, he can't help it sometimes. He's, he's brain injured. It don't matter what he is. I don't raise the three boys and give them all weapons. They know who was boss. Okay, well, this was getting embarrassing. People were walking through the parking lot staring at us, and it was really starting to piss me off. I, I really wanted just to say, screw you, y'all geezer, you're nuttier than my kid. But this is where I shop. So instead I said, 
Thank you so much for your parenting advice. I'm going to go home right now and beat the shit out of him. <laughs> Jerk ass. <laughs> well, now, this guy that loves David and gives him balloons all the time went in and told the manager that he didn't have to. I mean, at least the guy spewed his trash to my face. Most people are like, oh, my God. What is she doing to him, that poor thing? He is just screaming his head off. <gasps> I bet she's beating him. This kind of thing just makes me sick. I should report her. I'm going to call CPS right now. Blah, blah, blah. That's when I want to give her my kid on a bad day. She thinks the screaming is scary. Well, how ironic. ironic it is that Caucasians are so intimidated by Michael when he's just as intimidated by them, especially the cops. But you learn to be very careful. One time something happened to him that I'll never forgive and he will never forget. A few years ago, he went to visit his cousin Dwayne down in Charlotte. And they went into a convenience store after a ball game to get a soda. Michael was about 15 at the time. Well, anyway, they didn't know that the convenience store had been robbed an hour earlier. So when they walked in, the woman working behind the counter looked at my son and just knew he was the one who had done it. Now, don't ask me why she picked my son out as the thief. She'd never seen him a day before in her life. I, I guess we all do look alike, huh? Anyway, the whole situation was just so stupid. I mean, if he had robbed the store, why would he go back in? To buy milk duds? It just didn't make any sense. But for whatever reason, she picks up the phone and calls the cops. And when the police get there, she points a finger at my son and says, That's him, officer! And within a minute, they had pushed him down to the ground. Get down on the floor, goddammit, and don't you move. Well, Dwayne was so shocked, he didn't know what to do. But he told me later that he was so proud of Michael because after the cops threw him to the ground, kicked and screamed and cuffed him, he didn't move. He was just silent. And they were just waiting for him to fight, to resist arrest, to yell or scream. But he didn't. He was just still. I always pray that Michael will remember the lessons that I beat into him. Michael, if the police stop you for any reason, do not talk back. Don't move, no matter what. Why do, why do people always think that the black kid is guilty? Hmm? Why do they always think that he's the criminal? Well, they cleared him, but it took hours. And to this day, he's still scared of his... Mistreatment. When I hear or read about an autistic kid who's been duct taped in school or beaten or tied up, it just makes me sick. I don't care what he did to deserve it. All I can think about is how he must have felt with this so-called authority figure. <laughs> Degraded and demeaned because the real moron didn't know how to handle him. Of course, 50 years ago, these kids just rotted away in institutions. I mean, nobody realized they had a brain and potential. They grew into adults who were just as locked up neurologically as they were physically. A mind is a terrible thing to waste. But I can't let these things get to me. You know, the accidents, the exorcisms, the shit these uh, kids suffer from at the hands of their whacked out mothers. I kind of understand it. And that's what's so frightening. frightening. We thought things might get better after Obama got elected. But actually, in my neighborhood, things got worse. And people really don't understand that, my white friends will say. Jesus, what's your problem? We finally get a black president and you're still bitching? Society is so much better now, can't you see that? Don't worry, be happy. We are family. Bum, 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 bum. I got my, my friends are on auto guilt. It's the slavery thing, you know. They still don't accept the fact that we face inequality and are afraid of... Mm, see, loud noises, geese, the sci-fi channel. Other than that, David's not much afraid of anything. And that's the problem. ADHD is a huge part of his diagnosis. So when you combine hyperactivity with uh, zero impulse control and complete fearlessness, you get a kid who is hell-bent on scaring the daylights out of you. I, I turn my head for one minute, and he is hauling down the street naked or trying to jump into someone's swimming pool or climbing on the roof. Now, I'm lucky. My neighbors are kind. They're used to seeing David run around buck naked and me chasing after him like a lunatic. Oh, look, Herbert. 
<laughs> there goes that crazy woman chasing after her crazy child again. <laughs> I wonder if, if we ever did anything. Yeah, we screwed the window shut. We installed an alarm system. I'm pretty dedicated. To keeping Michael out of trouble. He's not a thug, you know. He's bright, and he's desperate for the country to see him in a more positive light. Shit, I don't blame him for getting frustrated. I mean, it's hard dealing with those same negative images he sees on TV and the movie and the news. This just in. Police caught the two black youths seen crawling away from an attempted carjacking. One of the youths was quoted as saying, Man, I can't believe that old white bitch knocked me out with her fucking cane. The white bitch he's referring to is a 93-year-old grandmother from Queens. Oh, check out her booty. She bootylicious. After I do it, she'll do my dishes. Yo, 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 you are my treasure. The way you shake it, you look like chicken. I want to bake it. Breaking news. Breaking news. This just in from our affiliates in Huntsville, Texas. Junior Washington, a black man accused of the vicious rape and murder of a 12-year-old, has been cleared on all charges based on new DNA evidence. After sitting on death row for 35 years, Junior is grateful to begin his life anew with a few family members alive today to celebrate with him. We had a chance to chat with Junior after his release. Junior. How does it feel to be a free man after all these years? Well, I feel good. I so blessed to be back with my family, cause most of them gone now though. So is my old hound dog, he ain't had no wife or children. But I got a brother left though. Well, he got the cancer, so I was just gonna take care of him till he passes on. I'm just so thankful to be free. Hallelujah, praise the... Stereotype. Yes, my kid screams. <laughs> and it's blinding. But most of the time, he's not tantruming. Something's happened to him, and because he can't talk and he can't communicate it to me, he, he goes ballistic. I mean, I'm his mother. I should understand. And when he melts down and he loses control, I see the pain in his eyes, and I know he can't take himself. Yeah, I lose control too, rarely, because David's gotten so much better, but I don't know. Every now and then, on a bad day, maybe the wrong moment, he'll do something and he just taps into something very nasty inside me. I want to grab him. I just feel like a monster. God damn it! Look what you've done! Are you trying to drive me crazy, David? Huh? What is wrong with you? You just broke my... You almost just tore up the... Why can't you just get better? Why can't you just... Calm down. And after a particularly hideous episode, when we've beaten each other up spiritually and emotionally, we just look at each other. He gets it. He understands. He understands the ugliness that's just transpired between us. We have this connection. We both cry together and he lets me hold him. My poor child. I don't know. It's not always bad though. I know that one day, one day, my son is going to grow up, and I'm going to make him strong. I just want him to, to calm down. You know what I like to do? I like to take my son to the mall because he enjoys himself. He goes up and down the elevators and up and down the escalators. And it doesn't matter if he screams or melts down because nobody can hear him. Nobody cares. I mean, it's not, you know, it's not like security is going to kick us out. He just has the time of his life. Sometimes I fantasize about having the time of my life. Or a cabana boy. Mm, let's see. Having people over would be nice. Candy and flowers would be nice. Having sex with a stranger would be... Impossible, lady. Do you know how many deliveries I gotta make in one day? If I was stop and bang every desperate, lonely housewife... <laughs> I would never get anything done. God, I am so done with all this. It's making me crazy. 
I walk, talk, eat, breathe, shit autism every day, and I get sick of it. I mean, not of him, of it. I don't know, it's just so hard. To change things, but you can do it. I know you can, Michael. One day, you are going to transform the world and make everything beautiful and colorful for everyone. He's my son, and I love him more than he will ever know. Sometimes I get so mad, though, I want to just fight his fights, but he won't let me, and that's a really good thing. But I just hate to see him in so much pain. I just want him to be... Treated like a human being. That's all any kid wants, autistic or not. Sometimes it was hard to treat David that way because, uh, I don't know, before he developed self-calming techniques, he'd get this wild look in his eye, and I'd wonder what I'd give him birth to. He'd come after me and pull my hair and scratch and bite. He'd try to destroy everything in his room. He'd bring down the dressers and the lamps and anything that wasn't bolted into the wall. I remember the blowouts my ex-husband and I used to have after one of these episodes. He'd shout, God damn it! What is wrong with him? Why don't you do something? He's gonna tear down the whole friggin' house? What is his problem? Why don't you stop him? He's not... He's not stopping because I don't know what I'm doing. I love David. I love my, my son. son.